So parametric equations are a great way to solve questions that are like this. So a cannonball fired at an angle 36 degrees from the horizontal. Initial velocity is 620 feet per second. Okay. Um, how far will it travel horizontally? So I'm going to draw the picture. And right, it's going to be real simple because not an artist here. So here's our cannonball. Um, we're starting from the ground. Right. It's going to go off at this angle of 36 degrees and we want to know when when does it land again so if we think about I'll go ahead and write in my v naught here initial velocity 620 feet per second so if we think about what's going to happen to this cannonball right it will travel right indefinitely right with the um, in the horizontal direction until gravity right brings it to earth so we're going to write an equation for the x component of its distance traveled and for its y component. Okay? So the x component is just rate times time. So I need the amount of the velocity in the x direction. So I need the component of the velocity in the x direction. So that will be right v naught cos theta times t. So distance it travels equals the rate in that direction times time. So for us, those values, right, it'll be 620, um, cosine 36 degrees, whatever that might be, and that's our coefficient for t. Now the y component, right, that has its gravity as well. So, and if you've had some physics, this will be a little bit easier. And if you haven't, here you go, I'll help you out. So the formula that we want is one half g for gravity, t squared, um, plus v naught in the y direction, t plus y naught, the initial position. Okay. So you might remember this from your very first algebra quadratic equations section where you'd talk about right projectile motion. And in that case, we wouldn't Right, we'd never talk about this x part, right? How far does it go horizontally? We'd usually only talk about this y. It goes up and it comes back down, and we'd just be interested in its height above the ground. So we're going to let our cannonball start from the ground, so our initial height will be zero. Gravity, when we're in feet per second, so gravity for us is going to be uh, 32 feet per second squared and since we're going to go ahead and have positive be up gravity works down right so i'll make that negative okay so um here we go here's our y equation then y equals negative one half times 32 t squared i don't know what that is plus v naught y so right that's going to be the y component of our initial velocity so um 620 times the sine of 36 degrees and that's the coefficient of t okay so let's go ahead and get some actual uh, numbers in there i'm going to go ahead and tidy up my equations there so x equals and i have my calculator in degree mode make sure yours is as well so i have 620 cos 36 so that'll be 501.59 T, okay, and then my y equation is going to be negative 16 t squared plus, okay, so now I have 620 times up sine, 620 sine 36. Um, I don't know how many decimals I need, 364.43, I guess, t. Okay, so y why is the only thing that stops right our cannonball from going on indefinitely around the world? I know there's a cartoon that shows it going forever, probably Bugs Bunny or something. Um, so we want to solve when y is zero. When does gravity right bring this cannonball back to Earth? So we're going to set y equal to zero. And thank goodness we don't have that um, initial height or we'd have to go to quadratic formula because of that right, ugly t coefficient. But in this case, right, we can just factor out a t, negative 16t plus 364.43, and that equals 0. So either t equals 0, that's here where we start, or negative, oh gosh, negative 16t plus 
0.64.43 equals zero, right? And so that's when we're over here. And so that time, I'll go ahead and use my calculator here. I'll just divide this guy by 16, right? Can you guys make sure the signs work out okay? So that happens at time 22.78. So th this is the time, right, that the cannonball has to be in the air. So how far horizontally is it going to travel in that time? So we're just going to grab that time and plug it into our x equation. So 501.59 times 22.78. Now my calculator has all of those um, decimals in it somewhere, I think it does. So I'm going to go ahead and, oh, 501, thank you. Um, I'm going to go ahead and grab the as many decimals as I have in my calculator. So I'm just going to arrow up and grab the 501.59 with all of its decimals and then multiply it by that last one with all of its decimals. So it's going to travel um, 11,424.6 feet.